Beans and beer. When people think of brewing beer, they don't think of beans off the top of their heads. Why the hell would you put beans in a beer? So, beans in beer. The idea behind the three beans is based upon an ancient formulation in medieval Europe, in the Slavic areas, in the Baltic areas. In those climates, they don't have access to regular brewing grains like barley and wheat, so they would use other fermentable sugars, and one of those was beans. Once they're dried, they can last for years, and they're, and they're also relatively light, so they're transported rather easily. Dealing with three different beans, cacao, coffee, and then the Romano beans, they may be all different species, but anatomically, they're all similar. It has everything necessary for life encapsulated in a shell. It's an embryo. Now, when three beans came together as a concept, it was exciting, but that's just the concept. When it comes to the execution, that's where Jan comes in. Right, when it comes to brewing beer, we feel pretty confident, huh? but regarding um, those other ingredients, the beans, we wanted to consult the experts. Well, fortunately for us, we have some local friends who happen to specialize in beans. Bean masters. I'm Michael Mast. I'm Rick Mast. And uh, we're chocolate makers. We basically seek one thing, and that's to make the best chocolate in the world. We source beans from all around the world, and our criteria for sourcing ingredients is we source the best. That's it. Basically, our technique is rooted in old, old traditions dating back to the Mayans, really. Grinding down the beans using uh, stone. Uh, many, many people have heard of a Mayan matate. Well, we basically have mechanized that and uh, do a very slow stone ground process to capture all of these unique characteristics of the cocoa beans. Just use beans and sugar where we're just highlighting the different flavor profiles we're getting from these great beans from around the world. We do everything from roasting to winnowing to stone grinding to aging to tempering all here under one roof. Well, traditionally, really, when chocolate was first discovered, the Mayans early on started using it as a drinking beverage. The history of this beverage is just steeped in legend. This was an intoxicating beverage for them. This was the beverage of the day. The fermentation of cocoa beans is really something that people don't really realize is happening. Cocoa beans are fermented. They're naturally fermented in their own sugars and their own citrusy pulp that's on the inside of these cocoa pods. And it usually ferments for about five to six days. And not only is it fermenting the, the nib, the inside of the bean, but also the shell itself, which is encapsulating tons of flavor. What's so exciting about them is that not only do they have all the flavor in there, but they don't have all of the additional cocoa butters and stuff that's in the nibs. It dissolves in water and packs a much more flavor punch. You can actually make a much cleaner, more flavor-forward beverage using it. And uh, that's what's so exciting about this collaboration. It's really the perfect thing to pair with a beer. Right now we have two of the three beans integrated after the mashing process. And of course, sequentially now we're going to go through laudering and boiling and fermentation like any other brew. And that's where the delivery and the integration of the coffee bean, the last bean to be integrated, comes in. For the first two beans, we added more or less a raw product, but um, the last bean is actually, it's, it's a finished product in itself. It became very delicate to, to hit exactly the perfect ratio. And it needed to be blended in a way that enhanced each other. 
So after the first part, we've already got the cacao and the Romano beans done during the brewing process. And the coffee, as we found out, it was more about the blending process. Coffee's a ritual. You know, we give people a platform to enjoy it, but then they get to take it home, you know, and then it's theirs. You know, that's the great thing about it. Ultimately, it comes down to, is it a good cup of coffee? My name's Steve Kerbach. Uh, I'm the head roaster, and I manage the roasting departments of Portland, Seattle, and New York for Stumptown. As roasters, we're working on a craft and we're working with the raw product. So the raw product brings something to the process and then we have the ability to either mute or highlight different aspects of that. And so I think that's why tasting coffee is incredibly important to us. Scoring, cupping notes, uh, defect analysis. So we're constantly tasting all of our coffee every day as a staff you know, to make sure that we're all calibrated, that we're, you know, and the challenge is, I think, that calibration, then, rather than uniqueness. And when you're dealing with a hot product, you know, that definitely was changing as it's hot all the way to cool. Cold brew, it's smoother than coffee, than, than hot coffee usually is. So you have something that's very cohesive from beginning to finish that you can work with. At Stemtown, it's very important for us to stay linked to the long-term heritage of the craft of coffee roasting. And I think it's really exciting for us to be working with other craftsmen who share those same ideals. Everybody involved with the project was Brooklyn-based, Six Point being just down the street. And right as it was about to get underway, um, Hurricane Sandy hit. Unfortunately, this was a, a much larger, a larger event than just a repair. We realized that our roastery had been hit really hard and, and pre pretty devastated. We uh, sort of have quietly opened a second location in the South Street Seaport, which unfortunately it was hit by uh, Hurricane Sandy and we had about two or three feet of flooding. One of those kegs with our test batches of three beans, it, it actually um, was sitting on a walking cooler and uh, when the flood came, it actually floated uh, without getting anything inside. And after the water went away, it just settled on the ground unharmed. And it's pretty awesome. And this project was already quite ambitious and then to throw literally a hurricane in the middle of it was only um, another obstacle. Hurricane Sandy came in and flooded Red Hook where Six Point and Stumptown are located. And all of a sudden, we have no access to cold brew. So the clock is ticking at this point and we can either do one of two things, throw in the towel and abandon three beans or make the trip out to Portland. Looks like we're going to Portland. So like with a lot of these beer projects that we do, what we originally perceive as an obstacle turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Because coming out to Portland allowed us to learn from the source and get a real better understanding of the entire cold brew process. Yes, absolutely. Um, Stumptown are truly masters in roasting and brewing coffee and learning about the entire process was definitely also very helpful in um, constructing the brew itself. And we were actually very lucky because without the headquarters, Three Beans never would have happened. Absolutely. You know, I think at some town we don't feel that excellence has to be exclusionary. Yeah, obviously uh, the main focus of our company is to create a great cup of coffee. Um, but the, uh, the culture and the sense of community is equally as important. 
It's important for people to realize that this isn't just about business. This isn't even just about beer. This is about friendships. This is about friends coming together and making something great. How could you ever be bored as a brewer? Even among those simple ingredients that we have access to, the infinite amount of possibilities, and that's really the frontier of any type of brewer is the formulations. And they're all just out there waiting for you to experiment with.